You are a spirit created in the image and likeness of God. The breath that God breathed into mankind at creation. Your discipline is love. Your characteristics are joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You are patient and kind. You never envy nor boast, nor are you proud. You are not rude nor self-seeking. You are not easily angered, nor do you keep record of wrongs. You do not delight in evil, but rejoice with the truth. You always protect, always trust, always hope, and you always persevere. Hi, my name is Curtis Palmer. I'm the pastor of Dayspring Christian Church. We're located at 617 Highway 401 South in Norton, North Carolina. I know it may sound strange to hear someone address you as I did, but you know, that is exactly who God created mankind to be before the fall of Adam. This is the one thing that all mankind have in common, whether you are a born again believer or not. And it is the starting point for establishing your true identity and effective relationships. And it is our desire to have a strong, effective relationship with you because we are committed to assisting you in your recovery from the fall of Adam and its impact in your life and understanding God's plan for your life as well as your significant role as human beings in a needy, hostile, and desperate world. I want to thank you for joining our Christian On Point ministry broadcast today. Join our Christian On Point family with a minimum monthly donation of $20 and receive our Recovery from the Fall study guide and access to our live weekly webinar training each Thursday night at 9 p.m. Visit us at www.dayspring2.com to make a donation and register for our weekly webinar training. Last week we talked about the rich young ruler and how he came before Jesus uh, with a sincere heart seeking uh, what he needed to do to have eternal life. And we saw that through that process, he was a religious man. He, he knew the word of God, and he had been living according to the word of God. But even with all of that, there was something lacking. He, he, he had this emptiness, this, this desire that there was something missing. And we learned from last week's lesson that it doesn't matter how much you do, uh, what gets you right with God is to be able to come to God with a clear conscience. Deep in your heart, in your mind, and spirit, knowing for a certainty that you are serving God in spirit and in truth. Because it's only at that place that you're going to have that internal peace. That place where you're able to really enjoy life and know that things are well regardless of what's going on. And we found him uh, lacking because we found that his trust was really in his, in his wealth. And you know, that's... that's important for us under, to understand because this kingdom that we live in in this world serves money and God is constantly allowing things to unfold in our lives each day to reveal in our hearts what our real trust and faith is in yeah. and it's our circumstances that if we are consciously aware will tell us each and every day where our hearts really are yeah. Whether they are sold out to God, to ourselves, or to the world. Understand that we were born with and sold out to the world. That's because Satan has established a deceptive world system that wars against There is a kingdom of sickness and death, poverty, violence, and hatred, destroyed by pride and greed and fear. And through deception, Satan tries to convince mankind that serving him is better than serving God. Amen. And he uses two chief weapons, the world and the human nature. And together with his working, his orchestration, uh, they make up a trinity. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life. Mankind is born into this world with a falling, needy mindset. But although he has, he's fearful of losing what 
has. And he always needs more. And he has been deceived by Satan to believe that the ultimate goal in life is to uh, become wealthy. Where cash is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. That's this king. That's this world's way. In this world, cash is the substance of things hoped for. Yeah, that's it. And it's the evidence of things not seen. There you go. Because if you got money, yep. even though you ain't seen it, you can get it when you want it, right? Yeah. That's right. That's the world's way because it's opposite of the kingdom. Yeah. But the kingdom of God is faith. Yeah. It's the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence of things not seen. See, faith is the currency of the kingdom. Cash is the currency of the world. Come on, man. See, you have to be able to break it down in its simplicity to see the picture. Mm -hmm. See, people struggle with saying faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. And the evidence of things not seen. But when you say cash yeah. is the substance of things hoped for, you can see that, right? I'm hoping for some things. Yeah. If I got cash, I can get it. Amen. And because I got cash, even though I don't see it yet, yeah. it has to come on the market yet, but when it comes, I can get it. Now, don't let me, ain't that picture very clear? Well, you have to think the same way about faith in the kingdom of God. <laughs> and that's what it is that we have to be delivered from. See, the objective is to become self-sufficient in the world system, not requiring any aid, support, or intervention for survival. Think about what I just said. The ultimate goal in this world is to become self-sufficient, where you don't need any aid, any help, or any intervention from anybody or anything to survive. Now, when you get to that place, don't you feel secure? Yes. Or when you think you're at that place, yeah. aren't you secure? Yeah. When you don't have to look at when a bill is due, yeah. you just know it gets paid when it's supposed to get paid. You don't have to check your account to make sure there's enough there. Isn't that a comfortable place? Yes. You don't even be concerned about whether you go to work the next day or not, right? Because you know whether you go to work or not, things are going to be taken care of. See, that's what the enemy has made us believe that money will do for us. Yeah. That's why we work so hard for it. And see, and, and you have to understand that not just in my bills, mm -hmm. this has to apply in all aspects. Yes. In all the different variables of life that, that are associated with you, this is what you pursue, that self-sufficiency. Where you don't have to consume anything outside of what you produce. Think about that. Don't you let that sink in for a second? Because that's the world's drive. That's the whole. That's the whole thought. If I just get to that place, why well, do I have to ask anybody for anything? That's a dangerous yeah. place yeah. to be. Amen. See, it is this desire that drives man to serve money, to earn his way in life. He is constantly seeking to improve himself through education and experience, and spends the majority of his time pursuing his own interests, which results in establishing wrong priorities in life. In reference to God, he spends the majority of his time achieving wrong goals. Think about that mindset. Even though you're accomplishing things, you're putting goals in place, there are, there are goals that are useless when it comes to serving God. But mankind spends most of his time establishing and accomplishing those goals in his life, those priorities. See, it is this attitude that expresses the ultimate sin of mankind, which is idolatry. Placing something above God in his life. Although he may attend church, he serves himself as though he is doing it for God. Even if he is involved in the work of God, he does it half-heartedly. He'll 
attend, he attends church regularly, but he is not personally involved with God on a day-to-day -day basis. Usually he serves in the church to be recognized, respected, and even ordained. Forgetting that God calls us to be faithful and a true witness of him. See, because mankind's attention is focused on wrong things, his witness for God suffers. Yeah. He expends so much energy and enthusiasm in pursuing his own interests, he shows little or no interest in the things of God. Yes. Once man becomes successful in achieving a certain level of wealth, he sees himself as self-sufficient, which gives him a false sense of security. Mm -hmm. It is clear at this point that his faith is now and has always been and what he can see, his balance sheet, Amen. what he owns, what he has. Yes. When it comes to earning money, he becomes energetic, hardworking, and creative. But he cannot seem to get excited about the things of God, Amen. which he cannot see. Amen. God does not condemn wealth, we need to understand that. The greatest obstacle standing between man and God is his wealth and his pursuit of it. Usually man is not even aware that this is a problem. He thinks he's serving God. Man becomes hungry and proud when he believes that he has all that he needs or is able to obtain it on his own. It is hard for man to pursue God when he senses that he has no need. Think about it. Everybody turns to God when they have a need. They can't meet. We don't even go to God for answers yeah. when we think we have the yeah. answers. Even though he says, acknowledge me oh, in all things. Amen. See, it's a practice. Yeah. And it's so. Unfortunately, he believes that God loves it because he is wealthy. But God, in essence, judges the opposite. God is not pleased with mankind's self-sufficiency. It is truly revealed here that man's faith is in his wealth, not God. Man believes that it was his own efforts that created his wealth for him. We must be reminded that there are only two sources of wealth in the world. The first one, found in Mark chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Number two, which is found in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 17 and 18. No, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not number two. Yeah, number two. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors, as it is today. See, Satan promised Jesus that if he would just bow down and serve him, he would give him all that the world has to offer. After all, he is the king of this world. Because of Adam. Adam so gave it over to him. So he is in charge of this world. He is the king of this world. And he has the ability to give you anything in it you want. If you serve him. It doesn't matter whether you've been obedient to God or not. And that's what has brought this false belief in the church. That I can live any kind of way. I can just pray to God, go to church and pay my tithes. And God will bless you. And the evidence, if you go to any church. Where they stand up and talk about being blessed. Or you look on Facebook. Or anywhere else. Where people talk about being blessed. They either got some physical, physically, yep. a car, a house, some money, money. Yep. boyfriend, girlfriend. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> a new husband, a new wife. Mm -hmm. They've been blessed by God. Yeah. How many people do you ever say, I've been blessed by God because I'm no longer an adulterer? Yeah. Or I'm no longer a fornicator. I'm no longer a liar. Clear. I'm no longer a thief. Yes. I'm no longer a glutton. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm no longer prideful. Yes. Amen. Go ahead. I'm no longer an angry person. Yeah. How many people 
Have you ever went anywhere and heard a testimony of being blessed? Yeah. Well, that was the blessing. Yeah. See, that's something that the enemy can't claim. Yeah. Amen. Anybody can claim a house, a car. Yeah. You got money, you got credit. Go ahead. And as desperate as things are, you don't even need any of those no more. All you need to do is have a job. Have a job. That's it. It don't matter whether all of it is already spent for you got it. All you need is a job. <laughs> See, anybody can claim those blessings. Yes, yes. But for someone to stand up and tell the truth, say, look, I used to be a habitual liar, and I don't lie no more. Go ahead. Now that's a miracle. Because <laughs> anyone that has fought against any of these spirits, oh, no, they just don't stop because you say it in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. That's it. Or because you prayed. You have to make some sacrifices. Yes. You have to change some behavior. Yes. And Satan has devised a system that if you make any of these changes that God requires, he makes it appear that you're going to lose everything Jesus. that you like, Come on, man. that you need, yes, that's it. and that you have been working so hard for. <laughs> which is nothing but a lie. Man, because the currency of the kingdom of God is faith. Yeah, man, yeah. And the currency of the world is cash. Yeah. We don't work for a living. We live the work. Yeah. And today, we, what we want to talk about is entering the kingdom of God. Entering the kingdom of God. See, because you have to know why we do what we do. You have to understand the battle in which we are engaged in because your numbers are few. But that's when God does his greatest work because when the war is over, only one can get the credit. Amen. That's Jesus Amen. through God. Entering the kingdom of God. We're going to be coming from Mark chapter 10, verses 20. Verse 23 it says, Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible. But not with God, for with God all things are possible. Amen. See, in this discourse, Jesus is bringing to our understanding man's <coughs> true distraction. But see, the Satan came in with that party, need, mindset, and deceived mankind to give away <laughs> anything that he needed to make life for himself. That's why now, as you're going through your walk, the enemy is trying to make you believe that the world is holding something back from you. It's holding the good jobs, the good neighborhoods, all the good stuff. They save it for a fee. But see, that's because he doesn't want you to look inside. Mm -hmm. Because everything that you need for life is in you. But the enemy has made you believe that it is worthless. It is impossible to bring it to life. After all, everything that you need to bring it to life has been held back from you. If you had all the money that you need, you could do these things, right? Isn't that what he's made you believe? Because he has you thinking that the currency of the kingdom is cash. But how many times has God proven to you so far that it don't take cash all the time to get what you need and want in the kingdom? Yeah. And look how long it's been happening to you. Yeah. And you really haven't registered as law yet. Yeah. You know, it, it happens to us all the time. But we just want 
don't look at it like we look at money. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you get a hundred dollars, I mean, like, they can take time getting ready to come around. I don't know somebody's already thinking about it. Yeah, it's December now, at the end of the month, I get that W-2. <laughs> Soon as I can get that thing out there by February, March at the latest, I'm going to be straight for a few minutes. Amen. <laughs> Everybody's anticipating, and I guess what, this time? Yeah. I bet everybody has decided right. they're going to use it differently this time. Yep. Because this might be the last one we get that. Yep. That's exactly what they're doing. Yep. I blew the others. Yes. If I look back, if I had just taken those and put them aside, Go because ahead. it was extra money, Go ahead. Go ahead. I would be straight today.
Not everybody, but some of us. But it's hard for the wealthy to enter into the kingdom, and the problem is they put their trust in it. And their desire for them, they do anything to get it. Not all of them. Not all of them. But most. Which would be another topic, cash before Christ. And cash after Christ. It's another story. <laughs> but Satan has designed it to be a selfish, self-centered, all-cost pursuit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what they're saying is, yes, but you got to be sold out to it. Yeah, that's it. Most people that are rich were sold, sold out, out to it yep. and lost all the things that were valuable to them. Yeah, that's it. Then they get it and they have no one to enjoy it. Yep, that's <laughs> it. Because we think that it's the money. It's not the money. And that's what people that want to get rich don't understand. It's just another tool of many. Amen. But it's the one that will drive you away from God mm -hmm. quicker than other few. Well, there's a few more that stands beat it head to head, but yeah. you understand what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. It's about the mindset. Being delivered from this fallen mindset <laughs> that we have been given. Look at what Jesus told the people who are following him. John 6, 26-29. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. You see what Jesus said? Look at also at uh, Deuteronomy 28, 1-14. Because they asked Jesus after he said that, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. What does God ask us to believe when it comes to the necessities of life? Before you go to Deuteronomy, look at Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Before we go to Deuteronomy, Matthew 6, 25 through 34. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on it. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth more of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. You see what God is saying? This is what God is telling us. Jesus said, don't follow me for the food. Jesus, God said, don't worry about what you can wear or what you can eat. But why do we get up going to work every day? Because of what we're going to wear, and what we're going to eat, and where we're going to stay, right? He said, don't worry about these things. Don't pursue these things. He said, your father knows you need them. But what do we do? Mm -hmm. Day in and day out, that's what we do. <coughs> also, let's go over to Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. But he goes on and said, don't worry about these things, because your father knows you need these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's what God has telling us. Look, don't worry about that. Seek me first, and I'll give you that stuff. But what does that look like? How do I do this? Deuteronomy 
28, 1 through 14. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. So sure we read these verses, but have we really allowed them to sink in to our conscious awareness? To really let it grow to be what it needs to be in our thinking. To be who God has called us to be and how to see these things. 28 verse 1 it says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these things shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall, ye, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way, and to flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. They shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in the season, and to bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. You shall be above only, and not beneath. Be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. You see, when it comes to your well-being, these are the truths that you must practice to develop the proper attitudes, behavior, and character that will represent God in these matters of your personal lives. See, it's those principles, those scriptures that we read, those are principal biblical truths that God is trying to teach us his people, that if we could get grasp them and really understand them and start to apply them, they will produce the proper attitude and behavior toward the word of God that will free this word to become active in your life. Well, how many of us have really taken these scriptures and said, wait a minute, you're telling me that if I do this right here, all this other stuff will be added unto me. You've been practicing it, haven't you? And when you practice it, does it work? So what would prevent us from staying to the task and letting money be what it is? It's just another resource. And let our focus be on our faith, which is more precious than gold. Mm -hmm. Because when you get to those places where the enemy says money, you should be saying faith. faith. Mm -hmm. So that I can see what God is going to do here to manifest this word. But what do we focus on? Money. We focus on the money. Mm -hmm. See, God will lead you to do things that requires faith. But along that journey, your desires will tell you you need to be focusing on things that are going to require money. money which takes you off the journey of deliverance mm -hmm. to know how to walk in faith. Yep, that's it. Did, did you get that? Yeah. See, yeah. because the enemy will tell you it's a good, this is a good place where you don't have to follow the plan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because he wants you to get you off that road, road. of faith. That's it. Wow. Because this is the thing. You 
just have to remember, what got you to that place to now have money to be looking at? It took faith in doing what God was telling you to do, right? And as you're doing what God is telling you to do, he starts to bless what you're doing. And he allows cash to come in and accumulate. There you go. What is that? This time that the enemy says, you need to take your cash so that life can continue to move forward for you. Yeah, that's it. Right? Yeah. And what do we do every time? I mean, it might be something that's major. Yeah. He'll say, see, your car just broke down. Mm-hmm. Your house just broke down. Yeah. <laughs> you just broke down. Yeah, exactly. You need to take that cash yeah. to fix it. Yeah. Well, you're supposed to say, faith got me here. Yeah. I want to see what faith do me here. Because yeah. yeah. it don't make sense to undo what God has been doing up to this point. Go ahead. But doesn't it always make you undo, undo. what God was doing? You 
start talking like that in public about you. Yeah. You look like a poor beggar. <laughs> no, I look like a child that was blessed by his parents. Yes. That I ain't yeah. got to have a part-time job yeah. while I'm supposed to be in school. There you go. <laughs> I'm supposed to be learning now. Yes, that's it. And God put us in these situations. Wow. But we get in a hurry. Yeah, I got to just. We want this. people to know <laughs> that I'm blessed. And I am Amen. I'm worth something now. Amen. Stop looking at me all cross-eyed. I used to be nothing when I was in the world, but I met Jesus. And I'm somebody now. Got a few titles and everything. Somebody trusts me. Well, see, that's the danger. That's why we got to take these scriptures and say, okay, God said he was going to do this. Let's try him at it. When it break down, let us take broke down and see what happens. Yeah. Let's see what happens. What kind of sacrifice you willing to make? Yeah. You might have to buy the boss of the work. I don't know. <laughs> but are you willing to do that? Uh, to stay where God has put you? Yeah. See, this, like we said, this is where we find those justifiable homicide. Homicide, yeah. yeah. It's okay to disobey God right here. Because <laughs> after all, look what this can do and look what that can do. <laughs> But the enemy know what your weakness is. Yeah, man. God. That's what he's going to bring you away. Yeah, buddy. And it's going to make complete sense to you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to make you look like something that you're not, but that's yeah. okay. Wow. You know what the truth is, right? Yeah. You know where you're headed, right? Yes. You know when you get there, you're going to be there, right? Yeah. But you don't want to keep being a yo-yo, do you? No. <laughs> Isn't that frustrating? Yes, sir. You get all excited, you're headed down the right road, you're going up, and all of a sudden, psh, the yo-yo go back down. You be trying to catch it, you know, doing tricks with the string and stuff, but it just keeps on going. It don't work, y'all. I've been telling you. Yeah. I played that one all the way through. Yeah. It don't work. Man. You just got to let that stuff go. Yeah. See what God has in store for you. Proverbs. 23, 4 through 5 says, Do not wear yourself out and get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches, and they are gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly <laughs> off to the sky like an eagle. Anybody seen them cash just fly away? Look like it was right there around the corner. When you get around the corner, it was... 4 through 5. Nowhere in scripture will you find a rosy picture concerning entering the kingdom of God or serving God. The process is lined with hardships and impossibilities. Sacrifices that seem unthinkable and unrealistic. Humanly speaking, there is nothing that would encourage you to want to take on the task. Based on all that we have learned since birth, it is all foolishness and makes no sense. Everything goes totally against the grain. And to top it off, we have the nerve to try to get rich in the process. Mm -hmm. See, what God is trying to tell you, it's hard getting into the kingdom of God. Yeah, Ain't nothing easy. I don't know who told anybody that it was easy following Jesus. <laughs> That's the only thing that I've seen on this side. That if they're trying to get you in, they do everything to discourage you. Mm -hmm. You have to hate mama. Father, brother, sister, you have to deny yourself, sell everything you got, follow me, turn your back on life as you know it. And as we're going through this process of learning this and telling this, it's not exciting. When you have to look at yourself Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, and Lord knows once you get a little clan like you got now, Look like you run into it every time you turn around. Somebody telling you something you learned, right? Hey, what's that all about? Mm -hmm. What's that showing you about you? Mm -hmm. Are they really the problem? Mm -hmm. Is that how we're supposed to be responding? Wow. Is that like God? <laughs> Even when you're doing good and share something, oh, yeah. I'm prideful there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to take credit for that. Oh, man, wow. <laughs> Why are you talking about them? Did you talk to them about that? Oh, man. What would God say right here? <laughs> Don't you get tired of hearing that all the time? Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> when, you, when you've stated a good case, 
Can somebody just throw something at you like that? You see, you don't understand. Yeah. You, you said I'm supposed to understand. Yeah. Why do you need me to understand? That is that who God? Yeah. You know, they just take you all those places with all those questions. Yeah. Who wants to hear that day in and day out? Then your people learn. Your children start telling you. Yeah. <laughs> but we need to move on, you know. I mean, I ain't rushing. We gotta move it all the time, but you know, we really need to take care of this as soon as possible. And that's the thing would have been better. <laughs> so I want you to think it's okay to stay here. Yeah. You know, and we can understand that because it's a journey. And there's always something else to overcome. There's always another change to make. And on top of that, you want to be wealthy too. <laughs> At least well off. <laughs> Man, that's a lot of trouble to carry with you. And that's what God wants us to understand. Which comes to this next principle. In verse 24, he says, And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. And that's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. It ain't about God don't want you to be wealthy. Mm -hmm. It's trusting in wealth. Mm -hmm. So when you trust in wealth, you don't want to let it go. Mm -hmm. You got to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. You're not free with it. And you're afraid somebody's going to take it from you. Yeah. You guard it. Mm -hmm. And you can't really be a blessing to others because there's only so much you can give away before you come out of your security blanket. And you got to keep that security blanket. Everybody's got to live it. You know, you, you find out the deal about it. Look, yeah. once I get down to here. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. I am not getting out of this basket right here. Yeah. Yeah. To go over there. I've been there. Yeah. there you go. I ain't trying to go back over there. And I know God told me to go over there. Because yeah. he brought me right here. He may have brought you there just to see what you be willing to give it up again. again. That's it. To see what you really trust, trust in. in. Wow. Do you trust in the one that got you there? That's or it. then you trust in the thing that he got you to? Yep, that's it. Wow. Man. These are the questions we really have to ask ourselves. Yeah. What am I really trusting in? It comes with great struggle. That's the second person. It comes with great struggle. Entering to the kingdom of God comes with great struggle. Acts 14, 21 and 22 says, They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. See, well, some people just want to get that heaven. Yeah. They ain't actually getting into the kingdom. Yeah. So they want to live there here outside the kingdom, but make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. You can do that too. Mm -hmm. But man, the chances of that happening, loving to live it here, are slim to none. Mm -hmm. Well, that may be a proof that you have not qualified to enter into the kingdom of heaven. 1 Peter 4, verse 17 and 18. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. For it is time for judgment to begin with God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? See, scriptures have told us throughout. Man, look, you think being saved is easy. You, you think you're going to heaven is some kind of like rosy trip. Man, it's designed to take out the weak. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and don't that sound cool? Yeah, man, it's yes. God has designed this thing to take out the weak that will fall under pressure. Yep, yeah, that's it. Hey, man. Because the only ones that are going to survive it mm -hmm. is the real Christian. Man. The only one that's going to stay to the task is the real Christian. Amen. The only one that's going to take the abuse and the struggle and the suffering that you got to go through mm -hmm. is the real Christian. Amen. And I'm telling you, 
after 30, 40, 30 years, I have not seen it fail yet. Yeah. Yeah. When you hold the professing believer to the word of God, you hold that word to their feet mm -hmm. consistently, yeah. it reveals who is real mm -hmm. and who is not. And it's so simple. You can never get blamed for the essence. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. People may lie. Yeah. But you know what the truth is because you saw a wave before the Exodus took place. Yeah, that's it. The Exodus was just a confirmation of all the things that you were struggling with. Yeah. How I got to go this tight. And they got to go this tight. Now they keep saying they love God like I do, and yeah. I would, I shudder at the thought of what I see them saying and doing. Yep, that's it. And they can do it so freely. Freely, that's it. And when I'm uh, and rebellious people, yep. See, it's designed to reveal who the real believer is. Amen. Who requires no change, mm -hmm. but inspires change. Amen. Well, how do you inspire change? By that's changing right. yourself. Yep, that's it. By allowing yourself to change and everything still be great. Amen. 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 Yes. Just by changing and allowing everybody to just be happy in that world. Okay, I'm jacked up there. Just be happy. Amen. Just be happy. <laughs> they can't stand it. Amen. They want to fight, but there's no one to fight with. Amen. So it makes them change and yeah. practice different behavior. Yeah. Not realizing that God is working and changing them. Yeah. See, the real Christian don't need to know and prove every day that you jacked up. Mm -hmm. He knows that when you were born, you were jacked, jacked up. up. And it. you were jacked up as jacked as you will ever get. Amen. So I don't need proof every day. Say, uh huh, I told you. Mm -hmm. I told you they messed up, see? Mm -hmm. The believer don't need that. The believer knows that you're jacked up, and I'm here to help you out jacked. Yeah. I'm here to let down the jack for you. <laughs> One click at a time. Click. <laughs> See, when you understand the way into the kingdom, you can recognize change. Mm -hmm. See, because change takes place on the inside first. Mm -hmm. But you have to be spiritual <laughs> to recognize spiritual change. Because if you don't recognize spiritual change, and the only reason you don't recognize spiritual change is because you're not changing. You don't know what it looks like to change spiritually. You look for physical change. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing that happens. For spiritual change, you recognize what spirit's in charge. And you can see the impact. See, I can recognize when the spirit of love is impacting your environment. Mm -hmm. You just be happy. You find yourself singing. Mm -hmm. You don't find yourself fussy and mad and angry anymore. And sometimes you, and you find yourself just free being jacked up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't nobody be like, why are you hopping like that? Don't nobody see that no more. They're not talking about that no more. So you don't feel it self conscious. See, because when you ain't delivered, they have you trying to walk straight. Now you really obvious. Don't know deliverance take place there. See, deliverance only takes place through the Holy Spirit's nurturing, mm -hmm. caring, allowing you free in your jacket. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, you'd be like, everybody walking the same. What's going on? Amen. I can't tell nobody from up where everybody's now walking the light. Why? Because you were allowed to grow into it. Amen. God was allowed to do some miracles and heal some things that that flesh don't know can be. Because you're able to walk in power that the human nature don't understand. He can't understand how something can change without you touching it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. 
He don't understand how things can change without you speaking on it. Man. Wow. <laughs> And it's that thing that you struggle with. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you be like, okay, that's my problem right yeah. there. That's, it. that's my problem right there. See that right there? That's what I struggle with right there. The person is all right, but that thing right there, yeah, yeah. I gotta go. Yeah, that's it. Why does it have to go? Yeah. Because I don't like it. Yeah. It don't fit into my thinking. Yeah, that's it. My way. Yeah. Your way. Now you see why it's here. Yep, exactly. Amen. Now you know why it's here. Woo, man. It's time to work on you. Work on you. Amen. Finish strong. Yes, that's it. Finish strong. That's awesome. Because the minute that you recognize it, yeah. see, they used to wear their glasses like this. Yeah. You couldn't stand it. Yeah, you could. Oh, man, I gotta say something. That didn't stuck them up again like this. Yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> what you think now? Yeah, What's your glasses supposed to go like this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you said. If you ain't wearing like this, why you got them like this? Come on, yo. <laughs> they were created for a purpose. <clears throat> right? Mm. See, the enemy knows how to find out where you in charge. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's it. Ah, hey, put your glasses up on your nose. Yeah, boy. You know better than saying something like that. Yeah. You just empowered it. Yep. That's it. You gave it power. <laughs> How much strength do you really have? Can you ignore it? Yeah, I'm like, that's it. Right. Yep. Can you pretend you don't see it? Man. <laughs> oh, this is just to see who's going to run this show. Right there. Yep. That's it. We ain't talking about being delivered yet. Nah. We just talk about who's going to run the process. Yep. Who will step in? Come on. Man. You know what? Not only nah, man. are you free to wear yours like that, yep. but I think it looks a little cool too. I'm wearing mine like that. Yeah. 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 I feel the power, y'all. Yeah, that's it. This is so invigorating. Yeah, boy. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know what I was missing. Being in charge. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Now, my struggle is between me and God. Yeah. Because I'd be like, put the glasses up on your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with you? And now your business. There you go. I'd be like, oh, you running it down. Oh, you think other folks only want to be fixed. Yep, that's it. Like them, Romans. Like them. Yep, that's it. 
That's it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Man, that's awesome. I love it. We talking about entering into the kingdom, y'all. Yeah. yeah. That's what it looks like. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Man. Wearing my glasses backwards do not change me or my standards. Nope. That's it. But what I want to do is keep God in charge. So, man, if I got to, if this got to stay like this, yep. it ain't no change taking place and me going to stop lying. That's it. <laughs> Something ain't gonna turn out right. Yeah. I don't know for who. But it ain't gonna be good for somebody. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yes. This is my growth. Mm -hmm. This is my development. Can I help anybody? Mm -hmm. You can help us. You don't have a help people wear their glasses right. Do you? Well, make sure I get outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. Maybe you look like this is what you promote. Yielded an abundant harvest. 
He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with who, so whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. You know what he's saying? Now, hear this parable. Up until this point, the man's barns were sufficient. <coughs> he was living a pretty decent life, I would assume. And things were with him. God gave him an abundance of crop. So much so that his barns became overfilled. But once his barn became filled, he had sufficient enough supply mm -hmm. for his life. But he said, what must I do? I have plenty left over. I know what I store up. Build me some bigger barns. Store yeah. my stuff up. Stop working and take it easy. Mm -hmm. Live the life around. Yeah. Get that. Mm -hmm. God says that his desire that we all stop stealing and go to work with our own hands, mm -hmm. that we will have to give to others. Yeah. See, but when most people hear that, they, when they hear that, they talk about, I ain't got nothing, so I'm going to take what I got to give to somebody. Yeah. God is saying that you can believe this principle and that you can decide before you get it yeah. what is enough for you to live on. Wow. If you can make that decision before you get it, I'll bless you to have it. Mm -hmm. And because you understand this principle, when you reach what you say you need, yep. your heart will be toward giving and helping others. Yep. Wow. Man. You got to get that before you get it. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it. Amen. We're waiting to get it. Yeah. Then decide yeah, we what we're going to do with it. Yep. See, that's what our life plan is about. Yeah. It's about you deciding after you have done the proper research on how much money it takes for you to be comfortable and enjoy the type of lifestyle you want to live. You're supposed to do that before you get it. Because if you wait before you get it, it'll keep changing based on how much you think you're going to get. That's it. See, at this place, you might be able to, you know, I just want to be able to do what I want to do, when I want to do it. You know, being able to take care of my responsibilities. If I want to go on vacation, take a vacation. If I want to go anywhere in the world, I, I want to be able to go and do the things I want to do. Then say, what would it cost to do that? Through doing research, you know, how much it costs to do this? See what it would cost. You say, you know what to do and live like this? I would need to be bringing in $300,000 a year. Or have left over $300,000 a year. God says, okay, that's cool. Now let's put this to work. See, because God will let you make a billion once you come to the proper yeah. place. Because mm -hmm. now I know I can trust you mm -hmm. to help others. But see, people's desires change yeah. based on their income. income. Yeah. See, and when you don't have nothing, the things you want in life is based on what you think you might get. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Recently, man, I might, it might be crazy to me ask for a billion. But if I can make like $500,000 a year or something like that, I can live off of that. I can be, be comfortable. Then you start making a million dollars a year. Then you're like, huh? I would like to do some other things. Why can't let me cross your mind before you got the money? Money, yeah. Exactly. See, now you're talking into greed. Yeah, I lust. You get what I'm saying? Right. It don't take all that for you. Yeah. Right. That's why you have to be honest with God. Mm -hmm. Tell him what you want to do. How you want to do it. Yeah. And say, this is what it will take to do it. Because yeah. see, he ain't limited how much he can give you. He can make you a zillionaire as long as he knew you were going to use it all up on you. Yeah. And what you want. And not going to make a benefit to the world. But that's why they even tell you, don't make no sister plan. You know, it's always changing anyway. 
The plan keeps you focused. Focus. Yeah. See, when your mind comes with all these great ideas, you just go back to the plan. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Are you hearing me? But we talk about giving into the kingdom of heaven. Serving God, <coughs> not ourselves. And understanding and recognizing the things that are standing in the way of that. In this last principle, in verse 26 through 28. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With me it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. See, and even in these questions, it lets us know that the, the disciples weren't poor. That's why it was so disturbing to them, though. They knew that they come out on rich family. Hey, wait a minute now. You trying to say, we don't gave up everything to follow. You trying to tell them we can't get, we ain't going to heaven? That's what he goes on to say. Whatever you give up for the kingdom of heaven, yeah. you receive back a hundredfold on this side. Yeah. And eternal life. But see, that's all those myths that the enemy has made us pay in our mind that God's people have always been mm -hmm. You're not supposed to have. You're supposed to have, but it's not supposed to have, have you. you. Yeah, You're supposed to be willing to let it go if yeah. it's necessary. It. And this fourth principle is, getting into the kingdom of heaven is the sovereign work of God. Sovereign. S-O-V-E-R-I-G-N. The sovereign work of God. That it means it's up to him and his way and how to do it. Not your way. And he has a plan designed particularly for you based on how you have been. Because of how he's made you and how this world has impacted you in your behavior. And this walk for your deliverance is designed based on you. How you become. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. And not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So you have to understand, regardless of what you find yourself, it was planned before you were born. This ain't something that just happened because all of a sudden you felt the urge. Amen. It's happened because it was sovereignly de designed and planned by God. He knew before you were born that where you are today, he knew before you were born that you would be right here where you are today. And whatever was going on in your life, he planned it yes. based on how you bent yes. to bring you closer to him, to help you enter into the kingdom of God. Yes. It's designed to help you enter. Mm -hmm. That's it. But if you are self-indulged, you're about your own interests, your own accomplishments and desires. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss it. It's about faith in a righteous and just God who knows exactly what he's doing and knows exactly what you need. Yeah. That's why we have to look at our situations like, look, is this God right here? Because mm -hmm. this is the thing you have to understand. He ain't brought none to you because you're perfect. Yeah. He brought some to you because you need to change. Right. And this is the thing that's going to change you or reveal the truth that you don't want to change. Yeah, that's it. That's what it's going to do. Yeah. And so once you understand that, mm -hmm. you don't have to listen to your mind. Yeah. Say no word. Say no good. Well, I need to do this. Well, I need to do that. <coughs> Let it flow. Remember, your river. A little more. Just flow. God shall the path design. And you'll always find yourself getting what you asked for. You just didn't know how to do it. That's it. That's it. Man. I had some plans in my life for how things were going to turn out. They turn out, but not like I thought they were. Not like I thought they were. But you know what? I'm excited about the opportunities. I'm excited about the opportunities. Now I get to wear my glasses backwards. And be happy. Mm -hmm. But seeing God work. Seeing God work on me. Seeing the power of God operating in my presence. 
seeing change take place by just making sure I keep them on there. And you know what? What's so awesome? I get to wear them like this too. And every day and then, I see everybody else wearing their glasses just like me. It won't be any long. Oh, I saw that. Look at that. And every day and then, we get to take our glasses off. And enjoy life. Have fun. Because once the sun sets you free, you are free. Are you entering into the kingdom of God today? Or have you gotten to the door and shut? And you're wondering whether it's worth breaking in. Breaking. It. Go on through it. There's some sweet, sweet stuff on the other side. Sure, you might have to cry while you pray. You might have to cry through the day. But it's all Because crying is just a way of cleansing. Setting you free to be who God has created you to be. And live up to who you say you are. It's just an opportunity. Who are you going to be? And your glasses have to stay the right way? In your mind? Or are you able to transition to be a blessing? and a servant for God. I don't know where it finds you today, but I hope it finds you encouraged. I hope it finds you willing to know what? And I have a chance. I have a chance. If I have a Oh, man.